we back. Now, today's video, we're doing the Zero Star Proficiency Challenge. First of all, I don't even know if it's possible. I know my good friend Six Rings of Steel does the Five Star Proficiency Challenge. I know that is possible, but I don't know if he's ever done zero. Maybe he has. I'll put his link in the description. So, basically, what this is, we're trying to build a team that is the complete opposite of what our coach normally runs. And I thought that the easiest way to do this is to A, get a defensive coach and try to put together a team that does not play defense at all. So leave enough likes on this video. We'll try the five-star proficiency challenge. So I went with the Spurs, right? Because y'all know Greg Popovich, one of the most legendary coaches of all time, probably the best coach of all time, if you ask me. He in 2K is known as a defensive coach coach and with his current lineup they're only three stars which is not a good thing so we have to turn that three star to zero star again i don't even know if it's possible so luckily for us it does tell us like hey dejounte murray is perfect for this system he's got a full bar he needs to get traded off this team lamarcus Saldes is a little bit in the green he needs to get traded off this team we're also doing like a little side experiment because i still want to try to put together a competent team i don't want my team to be straight 60 overalls because i think that would be too easy i want to try to build at least a competent team that does not fit the system and the second experiment is to see if the coach matters you know, I always wondered that. I'd be firing my coach because he got a D plus in offense, but does his coach rating really matter? So I guess we'll find out. The first line of action is to see, can we look at the entire league here? We can, all players. Who is the worst perimeter defending point guard? Oh, I should have saw this one coming. So we do have <laughs> the 5'9", Isaiah Thomas, technically the worst defending point guard in the entire game in the entire game okay worst defending shooting guard is matt thomas from newly acquired on the raptors but he's not good the best guy that is terrible is luke Kennard. he's a 76 overall but who's the first like 80 overall player that does not play defense at the shooting guard position we got jamal crawford he's a 77 but he's a c minus which is doable i need to keep these things like in the D plus D minus D range small forward Denzel Valentine Why does that feel just right as somebody that watched this man play night in and night out? I guess last year we didn't watch him at all, but this makes sense. You know, this makes a lot of sense or You know, he's a D and in defense inside. So we need a player that is OF Shri Makai Luke, but he's also bad. Who's a decent player? Hachimura, not very good, but he's got some good perimeter uh, inside defense. Big man. Defending big man in the inside is Cam Johnson. Um, okay, that's kind of disrespectful. For me, because I don't see him as a power forward. People in the comment section of my videos telling me he's a small forward slash power forward, but 2K got him as a power forward slash center, and that does not make much sense to me. So we do have our options. Like, Bielitz is a good basketball player, but he just doesn't play defense. And then center... The worst is this guy who I don't know, but Ryan Anderson and Nance Cancer. We have to trade for Nance Cancer. That is the first thing on the agenda. He is the perfect person for this experiment. So let's go over to the Celtics. And Nance Cancer, what y'all want for him? So they got a trade here where they want DeJounte Murray. I want to save DeJounte Murray, um, but we can't do Lonnie Walker and Metu. That is a deal. Again, I'm sorry, Spurs fan. I am demolishing, demolishing your team, but I got to do what's best for the challenge, all right? So with that trade, we are still three stars. But as you can see, Inez Cancer does not fit this whatsoever. So let's try to go out and get, who is the point? Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas has to be on this team. 1,000% Isaiah Thomas has to be on this team. Because what's the team that can't play defense without the worst defender in the league? Damari, Car they're asking for a bit much, ain't they? Wow. Do we give up? Damari Carey was a very good defender. So, yeah, we'll do this deal. They give us a second round pick at the trade exception deal. So, let's say we just switch this right here, right? Immediately, DeJounte Murray goes to the reserve. We give Isaiah Thomas all of those minutes. What's the system like? Okay, two and a half stuff. Isaiah Thomas. Wow. He Look how small of a meter that is. That's kind of sad. So, we do still have to trade Derek White and LaMarcus Aldridge. Um... DeMar DeRozan just fits. I mean, we could probably get worse than DeMar DeRozan. Let's try to get worse. So DeMar DeRozan's perimeter defense is a B plus, which is great. So we just need something worse than that. These guys, these are my top priorities. Get these three guys off the team. 
we're gonna try to trade for bogdanovich here from the kings um i was looking at his stats a little bit earlier perimeter defense is well below average post defense is well below average so they accept that straight up they will so that is a deal right there and we're gonna have him start over demar de for now because we still have to trade demar but let's see what our team would look like actually we got to get Derek white off the team too Derek white has to go it just makes sense to trade for Zach Levine. Like, I got to say that Zach Levine has definitely been trying on defense over the last season or so. He's just still not good at it. So he's a C-. minus. We're trading Derek White and LaMarcus Sarge. We're getting um, Thaddeus Young, who's actually a very good defender. So we're going to have to flip him immediately. But Zach Levine is on the team. Again, we're trying to stay somewhat good while making all of these trades. DeMar is still here. Rudy Gay's defense. How is Rudy Gay's defense nowadays? um he's about average we need below average so he will be traded as well so we're gonna trade for Gallinari, who is below average according to 2k in perimeter and post but again trying to stay relatively good he can score the ball you know he can score the ball with some of the best of them so again i do want isaiah thomas <laughs> starting for us because that just makes everything so much better so if this is our lineup we are looking at two stars still what so demar has to go even I think Anas Cancer has to go too, man. That's that's almost halfway bar, which is saying something. Because we all know Anas Cancer is not a good defender. So Demar has to go for somebody that is Zach Levine level of defense. I got somebody in mind. So CJ is not nearly as bad as Zach Levine defensively, but we're gonna make this trade and maybe we'll flip CJ. Um, because him and Zach Levine are neither of them are tall enough to run small four. But let's say we did make him. Oh, Zach Levine's overall stays the same. We may keep him at small four. Let's see what our lineup looks like. Again, I want Isaiah Thomas out there. Yeah, we need Isaiah Thomas out there. So we're looking like Isaiah Thomas, CJ, Zach, Gallinari, and Anas Cancer, who again, I think I do have to trade. We're looking at one and a half star with this lineup. Even again, even CJ still pretty good. Anas Cancer. Anas Cancer has to go. So yeah, so hmm. Do our does our bench matter with this? Or is it just our starters? It's just our starts. It is just our starters. So Anas Cancer has to go. We have to find an even worse center defensively than Anas Cancer that is also good. Because Anas Cancer is a good basketball player. Offensively, mostly, and rebounding the ball. So is there a center out there that is as bad? Ryan and like Anas Cancer literally is the third worst center in the league. That's including two bombs. So I feel like we're gonna have to go for like right. Does Ryan Anderson even have a job? Where does he play? He did resign in Houston. Okay. All right, so let's just try to trade for him, right? We're just going to do the quick trade finder. Ryan Anderson, he's old. Nope, y'all don't want to trade me him? Okay, I guess I have to manually put together a trade for Ryan Anderson, which I never thought I'd have to say it out loud, but he's making $2 million. Simple, okay. Um, And then we're going to give Inez Cancer's minutes to him and just see what happens to our system. It is still one and a half which tells me that cj has to be traded he's still too high it's going it's hard to put together at least a decent team that can't defend i think it's literally impossible because all the good players bring it on both sides of the ball at least a little bit even if they just average we need somebody that's great offensively but well below average defensively i don't even know if that exists so we have to find a shooting guard or small forward to take cj mccullum's spot that Perimeter defense is trash, but they can also score. I don't think, again, I don't think that exists. So I feel like we're going to have to trade CJ for Luke Kennard? Pistons fans rejoice. I'm about to give you a free player. If y'all didn't accept this trade, you're not interested in giving you CJ McCollum. When you already, you already have Derrick Rose. So it can be that you don't want to give up Reggie Jackson. How would you say no to this deal? 2K is bugged. You'll give you a second. Oh, he wanted that, that second round pick meant so much to y'all. All right, we got to the point now where it's, it's impossible to build a good team while keeping these stipulations. So here we are. Here we are. Ryan Anderson is getting those minutes. Isaiah Thomas, where you at, baby? You need those minutes. We need you playing big time minutes over Patty Mills. So let's say this is our lineup. This is probably the worst defensive team we could put together right here. And it's still one and a half. So that means we have to trade Gallinari too. To somebody who is the worst defending power forward. I can't even go for a decent 
power four no more. It literally has to be the worst defending power four. We have to call up the Kings. We need Bielitsa on the team. So let's go to the Kings here. This is tough, y'all. This is tough. I don't even know if it's possible. We're getting to the point where I'm, I'm going to start to think that it's impossible. They need to make up 10 million. Give us Corey Joe because y'all overpaid the heck out of Corey Joe. Okay, that is the deal. We basically just gave them whatever they wanted to make this deal happen. So, I'm going to re-orchestrate this lineup. I'll be right back. So, Isaiah Thomas, Luke Kennard, Zach Levine, Nemanja Bielitsa, and Ryan Anderson. If this is not the zero star, then it is impossible. It's one star. It seems like one star is the lowest you can go. Um, so, we'll save it here. I just want to see one game. How bad do we get beat? Our first game of the season against the Knicks. A bad team. And they going to beat us. They put up 122 points on us. But Zach Levine said, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give them 35. So maybe, again, we're going we're gonna to keep toying with this for a second. Um, game two, we won. Uh oh Zach Levine doing his thing. Isaiah Thomas doing his thing. Okay. So, again, we're going to look at this. Bielitsa is still the best defender on our team. And I don't even know how that's possible. It's a one star. It is one star. And no matter who we sub in, it won't go lower than one star. I think that one star is the lowest you can go. So if that's the case, did I succeed? So this is what we're going to do. We'll see how many games this team wins is when all of these guys are playing maximum minutes. <laughs> the worst defending team in history play maximum minutes. Um, we'll see. If you change the system, we can get all the way up to a three and a half or two and a half star. But we're staying, of course, defense. Greg Popovich, I'm sorry to put you this, man. I know your, your old age. This is not the season you signed up for. I, I'll give you that. But um, we just got to see how bad they are. And I'll be back. Seems like this team is going to end up with 10 wins. Maybe 11 if we get the 10 total wins. LeBron went in. I don't care about none of these. Nemanja Bielitsa! I, kind of, I guess that kind of makes sense considering he was playing 48 minutes a game. His numbers had a better win up. Everybody's numbers look insane. Maybe not the field goal percentage. But as far as their counting stats, all of them better look insane. Because, I mean, you played every minute of every single game. They, Frank Vogel and company, flipped our record. And they won 70. Anyway, actually, I was about to say, we might have an all-NBA player. Zach Levine, there it is. He averaged 32. He actually shot relatively efficient, too. Shout out to Zach Levine. Maybe the Bulls need to play him 82 or 80. 48? 48 minutes. <laughs> Dyslexia. You acting up again. 48 minutes. Every single game. LaMarcus all just all NBA third team back with the Bulls. Yes, I said back with the Bulls. If you know the history, you know. You put up big numbers with the Bulls. Shout out to them. So we win a total of 10 games here. But the real question is, were we by far the worst offensive team in the league? Team stats. Obviously, we lost the most games. Our point differential was minus 21. I got to Google what's the worst point differential in NBA history. I couldn't find it. I don't know. I would guess this is like close to the bottom of all time low. So we allow teams to score 120 points a game while only scoring 98. And Zach Levine had 30 plus of that 98. Isaiah Thomas... Big season from IT. He shot the ball kind of efficient. At least, actually, no, I'll take it back. That's actually pretty bad efficiency for your starting point guard. Where's the assist? Where is Luke Kennard let us an assist? Oh, boy, it's time to end the video. I don't even know how these guys end up getting minutes when we gave all the minutes to our other guys. And they're, how is Zach Levine not tired? That dude is a workhorse. He played 48 minutes of 82 games, and you try to tell me he's not at least a little bit tired like the other guys? That's insane. Well, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave it a like. Two things we found out today is that you cannot get a zero star on the system proficiency. The other thing is that I guess it does matter. Your system does matter a bunch. So keep that in mind when you're doing your own rebuilds in the future. Be sure to leave a like if you did enjoy it. I'll be back tomorrow. Peace.